Hello, everybody. This is Eddie Nining from MIDI Guitarist, and I welcome you to a new series of videos about the Boss GM800. Last year it was about use cases, and this year it will be about combining the GM800 with a computer and an audio interface. And so uh, the first part of the series, the first episode I'll show you today, it's all about setting up uh, the connection between the GM and the computer and how to use the uh, Boss Tone Studio as an editor. In the second part, I'll walk you through some virtual instruments which you can run on the computer and uh, which are triggered by the Boss GM. The third part will deal with live applications, uh, two I will sh uh, show to you. The first one being Main Stage by Apple, and the second one uh, Gig Performer by DeskQ, which I've switched to from Main Stage about two years ago. And both uh, can run your whole setup for uh, live gigs. I'll show you in the third video. And the fourth one uh, will present my setup uh, with an audio interface as the center of, of the whole thing. Um, well, you see in the fourth video. But let's dig right into today's topic, um, which is to set up the connection between the GM and the computer. First of all, uh, in order to run data from the computer to the GM, you unfortunately can't use the, B, uh, the USB uh, connection. I mean, uh, it works both ways for, for the Boss Tone Studio, but not for firmware updates and not for tone extensions you can uh, buy in the Roland store. So first of all, you will have to insert a fresh USB stick into this little slot here beside the USB connection. And this you'll have to format inside the GM. So you go to menu, and then you press the right page button twice until you reach the USB memory here. You press the left of the four buttons and then you press the right page button again until you land here where it says format. You press this one and then it asks you, do you really want to do this? Once uh, you have inserted the formatted USB stick into your computer, uh, you should go to the Boss download page. I'll put a link in the description below. And there you have to download at least two items, the Boss Tone Studio, either for Windows or for Mac, and the driver which drives the computer or which you need in order to combine uh, or connect the computer with the GM. So either the driver for Windows or the one for Mac OS. But here uh, you have at least to have a computer that runs Big Sur, 11 point whatever. So if you haven't, uh, it won't be of any use for you. And the third one you might need or might not need. At the moment, it would be useful to download that as well. That's the updated firmware version uh, 1.03. My GM came with an older version, 1.02 and it wouldn't connect with the Boston Studio. So you download these three items. Once you've downloaded it, it will look something like this. That's the Tone Studio. That's the driver, which you have to unpack. And this one you shouldn't unpack. That's the firmware. I'll show you that in my download folder. That's the Boss Tone Studio. I could just double click it and run through the installation, which I won't because I have already installed that. The driver looks like this. You double click that and then it will open up to something like this. So you double click the driver and install that as well. And then you're basically good to go, provided you have the right firmware version, sorry. This one, this GM800 UPA whatever dot bin, uh, you don't wanna unzip that. As it is, you have to pull that onto the root directory of your stick. My stick is called GM800. This is the root directory. And you see it's right inside the root directory and not here inside the, the Roland folder or sound folder or whatever. It has to be right here as well as if you download EXZ sound packs and you want to load them into uh, the GM, you'll have to put them into this folder. So then you're good to go, provided you've got the right firmware. And you can check that out if you 
switch off the power of your uh, GM, which I'll do now. And you have to press exit while powering on, and then uh, a screen will appear and show you your firmware version, the one you're uh, currently running. This I'll do now. So it's booting up. And there you see I've got version 1.03. If you haven't got 1.03, um, you should power down again and while powering um, and then insert uh, the USB stick with this firmware here. And in order to install that, you power it up again while pressing right and then it will ask you, uh, no, I don't think it will ask you anything. I can't remember, really. Um, it will just install the new firmware and uh, will inform you when everything is running. And once that has happened and uh, you have rebooted your computer in order for the driver to function, you can start with the Boss Tone Studio, which I'll show you in the next part. So, welcome to this third and fun part where I'll show you around the Boston Studio. If you want to do the same with your setup, you should have, as I told you before, installed the driver on the computer, installed the firmware in case it wasn't 1.03, and installed the Boston Studio, and then reboot the computer and start the GM, start the Boston Studio, and then click in the screen on the GM screen that you want that as the uh, MIDI source. And once you've done that, you'll have a window like this. That's the editor window, where in the left you find all the sounds there are. It really depends on how many sounds uh, you've already done for yourself. Well, the factory sounds run up to 100, and from 101 upward you can program your old sounds and write them if you click on right here and follow the menu. That's the left side. The top side is the basic functions uh, of this whole thing. Here you edit the sounds and here you edit the library. If you click on this, here you can pull sounds over and build a live set, which I want to at the moment. Here you can reach the Boss Tone Central where you can download certain live sets. Then you have a tuner with a GM. It correspond corresponds directly. I'll close this one. And then you have the menu for the basic functions, the knob settings, the GK settings, where you can fine-tune your different GK guitars, the in and out settings, where you can program the master comp and the master EQ, play options like master key shift or master tune, hardware settings, where you can switch the expression slots on or off, or the GK volume or hold or whatever, if you've got one. In USB audio, you can choose between standard mix and resynth. And that brings me to one important tip for you. You should download the parameter guide, which is a lot bigger than the basic instruction manual. There you'll find all the meaning of this stuff which would take too long to explain to you. Here you've got the MIDI settings. Here you can get the owner's manual, which alone isn't enough in my eyes. Here you can select the device, which should always be GM800. Here you can see the version, and here you can do a backup. We move out of this one, so that's the top panel. And I'll go back to the editor, which has two basic sections. The top section you see here, where you have the master, controller, sign, and guitar to MIDI slots, two FX, a chorus delay, and a reverb, which you can edit via these slots, and the scene level. You can even choose a tempo, which I won't show you now. And then you've got the four parts you can add to one another, and the rhythm part, optionally. Here you can edit each part. Here you can browse the tones. And here you have the basic functions, the level of the individual part, the panning, the chorus tune and the octave shift. By the way, I would always go to this slider and try not to hover here. As you see, uh, if you do that, there you run the risk of getting some uh, values other than you want to tune. And finally, you've got the chorus send and the reverb send and the two FX sends, which is either FX1 into FX2 or 
FX2. So th that's the basic functionality. I'll show you this sound where I combined two of the same keyboards. And you can add a little flavor. Here I've got a bright electric piano. And I can add a chorus watery EP and it sounds like this. So you see, alone just the selection of the four parts is like a sound canvas and you can go deeper and deeper into the nitty and gritty. Uh, here you can pan the stuff, put one sound more to the left, the other more to the right, or adjust the levels like you want and the other parameter I, uh, I showed you. I'll go through some sounds uh, to show you one or two other things. Here's the church organ I played in the beginning, where you see I've got basically got four organs I could use together. I only switched uh, on three of them and uh, you can really sort of registrate, at least that's the German word, I don't know the English word for it. This is what the organ players do when they pull at the stops. And by that I mean, in the organ you've got these four inch stops, eight inch and 16 inch and whatever, and they're always an octave apart. So if I just solo the top one, it sounds like this. But here you see, I've done an octave shift. If I go into the normal section, Octave down. Two octaves up. So it's like having pipes of different uh, lengths. And if you use that together, it's just like an organist uh, who can do that with his, uh, his stops. So if I put the other pipe organ on as well, you see I've got an octave shift here as well. So we've got... A very bright sound, but here I've got the church organ three without an octave shift, and there you get the basses. And I've got another organ I could add to that, which also has an octave shift. So you see, for organs, be it uh, cathedral organs or B3s or reed organs, uh, which I'll show you in a minute, you can really have fun just with the parameter input level and octave shift. Let's move on to the 12th string guitar I used in the video series before that. Here I mixed two kinds of guitars. I put the low uh, four strings onto this part, but I didn't use the top two strings. There I use this sound in order to have a unison sound and not the octave sound. And so I have mixed the top two strings with the bottom four strings and they share these two sounds. How to go about this, I'll just show you here. I'll go into edit and uh, if you see strings, I've muted the G to the low E string and I've only activated the top two strings. And on part one, it's the other way around. I muted the top two strings and I've uh, the four bottom strings for this sound. So if I leave this again, Quite nice, but I wanted more bass. And so I took another 12 string unison guitar and I had an octave shift, one octave lower. That's the one thing. And the other thing, if I go to the strings again, you see I muted the top four strings and I've got only the bass sound. You hear? The bass is very much more pronounced. And then comes the, the ordinary 12 string guitar.
And then, just for good measure, I put in a pad for a little uh, sort of gluing it all together. Which you only hear when the guitar sound decays, apart from that. It only breaks through once a certain decay point is reached. And all this is is a breeze here. Let's look at the reed organ. There I've got three different reed organs put together. Just have a look at the octave shifts. Yeah, this is one octave lower. And apart from that, so the middle one is one octave lower. So if I want this little brighter, I can put the top one. Or even. Put it back to normal. So you get the basic idea. And apart from that, what for church instruments, what is very important is the reverb. And here we have this type of reverb. We might switch over to a hall. It's okay. We might need a little more send overall, and then we're here. Okay, but the church is not big enough to my ears, so I set the level up. And make the time a little longer. That's better. So you see, you can edit the effects quite easily. But one last thing I would like to show you is a piano, because unfortunately what is lacking in, in the GM, uh, as far as sounds are concerned, is a grand piano. That just isn't a, a good grand piano. That's why I bought the grand piano EXZ file, which sounds like this. As you can hear, I have uh, the bass, the two bass notes are uh, one octave down again, but this didn't convince me either, so I added an acoustic piano. That's a little nicer. I could even turn this up a little. So this rounds up our little tour of uh, the Boston studio. There's so much to discover here, so I cannot recommend it highly enough to download it and to combine, even if it's an old computer, anything with a GM, and you'll be very, very happy. So if you liked this episode, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe to this channel if you like. And I hope uh, I'll see you in the next video, where I'll be showing you the virtual instruments inside the computer, which are triggered by the Boss GM. Hope to see you then. All the best.